Uh, Chad, do you want to lead off? To which I replied, Mm -hmm. God, no. (laughs) (laughs) We've all, we've all been that person and seen that person. (laughs) And usually about halfway through the race or earlier, things are not going very well. Right. It doesn't usually end well. I only do it so many times. Yeah. Now there's one thing about having proper technique when you're out of the saddle and, and, and pedaling your bike. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're sprinting, the, that is that intensity goes up, uh, torque goes up, tension needs to go up. Technique needs to be more precise and fit into a specific mold, so to speak. Uh, and, and it all is very costly in terms of energy and Mm -hmm. uh because you know yes every bit of tension in your body is uh, energy that's being used that theoretically could go to the pedals but you reach a certain point where you need that tension in order to put as much torque as you can through those Mm -hmm. pedals and muscle capacity and there's effect uh, a limiting effect on the brain so there's there's a lot of things working against you if you do it too much so stepping back from that you can still put out a good amount of power without mm-hmm. doing that. And that's, a, oh, yeah. that's what you would recommend, right? Yeah. Amber, like yeah, for sure. <laughs> not sprinting all the oh, time. Oh my gosh. No. Um, so I would say when, when you're talking about just like a full, full gas sprint, you want to save those for your 100% commitment moves. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're a breakaway rider and you don't want to be in that bunch kick at the end, like you want to reserve the sprint for your race winning move, or if you're doing that, 1k to go i'm gonna try to solo into finish that's when you need to do it but this is not something that you want to do out of every corner so Mm -hmm. better than that would be you know try to slow down less in the corner so you don't have to accelerate as much out of the corner and Mm -hmm. if you do have to accelerate out of the corner there are ways that you can kind of leverage your body skeleton and the mechanical advantage that you have without putting a lot of uh, muscular force into it Mm. um so really you want to use this uh you want to really reserve your full out sprint for when you're 100% 100% committed to the move. Um, and uh, let's see, there was something you know, if, else. If you're fi- finding yourself and frequently finding yourself in the position where you have to really get on it as a sprint, mm-hmm. I, I see that as a lack of anticipation and poor yes. positioning. Yes. yes. Yeah, or, 100%. Or lack of patience. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because mm-hmm. if, if a gap opens up and you're panicked about closing it, chances are someone else's too. And if you wait an extra four or five seconds, mm. someone else will get antsy and they'll shut it down. So, <laughs> you know, you... If you can, use the efforts of others before you use your own energy source. That is such a good tip. And I feel like a lot of us, uh, our first advice that we got with Criteriums was like, Don't stay in top gap. five. <laughs> and if that wheel squeezes out more than six inches away from you, you better sprint to hold on to that for thing. For real. And, and, and I'm sure that a lot of us did that for the first race and it feels really rewarding because you completely wrecked yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, for a 30 minute so crit. So tiring for a 30 minute crit, but you could do it for 30 minutes. Uh, but things change and you get in like with really fast racers and everything else. And you, you do have to put a premium on efficiency. And uh, a lot of people, whenever I, so, I mean, of course I, I watch every video that we put out all the race analysis ones and everything yeah. else. And uh, I always look at, laugh at the comments because uh, on the internet, I'm not sure if you guys know, but we're all experts experts uh, on the internet, right? And, <laughs> that's uh, what it's for. It makes what, everybody yep. an instant expert. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and so many people get so mad at Nate and tell him exactly what to do and that he's opening up gaps and he shouldn't be letting those gaps open up. And, uh, while Nate actually admits that back in the day, he had a problem with opening up opening gaps because he was actually worried about riding so close to riders. That's mm-hmm. not the case anymore. Right. He's really just trying to smooth things out because the energy cost of, of efforts as power goes up is exponential, right? right. Uh, or at least it's not a linear relationship. Um, yeah, it's curvilinear. So, it goes, yep. It yep. starts mm-hmm. to get really high. And so if you can basically like if a, if a rider surges in front of you or a group surges in front of you and to hold on to that, you can either sprint for and do 900 watts for a few seconds uh, or for like one second and kind of like latch onto that. Or you can do something like 500 watts for three or four seconds. That 500 watts may be a lot less relative to your threshold. These mm-hmm. are just funny numbers, you know, uh, but it may be less costly. Uh, and you'll have to kind of figure out where that line uh, resides and always kind of test your best guess, so mm-hmm. to speak, with that. But I've found that. If I, and I, I think I have really high repeatability for most riders. Like I have an ability to punch over and over yet. I, when I look at races where things went South and I missed the crucial move at the end, or I wasn't able to really execute like I wanted to almost always, it's because I had a ton of efforts early on that were sharper than they needed to be. Right. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Yes. Yep. And, <laughs> and often in racing, you feel really, really good in the beginning. So you're like, oh, I'm on fire today. And, so does everybody and, and it else. feels so easy <laughs> yeah. to just shut everything down. And the funny, yeah, exactly. Everyone else feels great. And then you feel great until you don't. 
and there's not really much coming back from that. So, yeah. I mean, a good rule of thumb is that it is easier to shut down a small gap than a big one. So, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things you can do is just take a preventative approach and be really, really focused on what's going on and try to anticipate what people mm -hmm. are doing and not put yourself in a position to have to close a gap. But if a gap opens up, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to jump across or like you said, you know, put out a huge cover it instantly. Yeah. No, it also is like such a like great tell. I, I'm, I'm grateful for the, for racers that do this. Although if I was to give them advice, I probably wouldn't, <laughs> but when racers are like, just, they sign everything before they, 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 they go. Like what I mean oh, by that is yeah. like, you know, it's like shift, shift, you see them <laughs> shift a few times, grip onto the drops, you yeah. know, maybe tighten the shoe. Oh, here we go. And it's like, I think we're just closing a gap here. You know, we're not going for the field sprint, but it's really common. Yeah. And, and it's just like a very clear sign because getting into this sprinting position is a very clear, I mean, it's darn near like a, like a bull dragging its foot in the ground. You mm. know what I mean? Like it's, it's a very clear sign that you as a unit, as a human are about to do something at the max. Right. Yeah. So the more, the more subtle you can be, uh, the better <clears throat> chance you have at catching people by surprise, which like you talked about in terms yeah. of getting a gap is one it's of the huge. most important things. If you like that video, check out these playlists for more of the same and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to become a faster cyclist, head over to trainerroad.com. That's what I'm going to do right now.